So first thing what is required is we have to have an account on Quay.io registry Q-U-A-Y.io This is the uh, repository managed by Red Hat and you can sign in or you can create an account if you don't have an account you can uh, create an account so try for free premiers or simply sign in if you don't have account so sign in with Red Hat like you need an account ultimately so you have to have an account I'm signing in with my account this is my account so if you have account you clearly, clearly create the account and sign in and you can see that I have already have images here OCI and Oracle these are the images I created uh, in May you see here date and uh, timestamp you can see check <clears throat> so this actually gives you complete facility to manage your images accounts settings the repositories and the images there so you will see the pull request also the image which is created here podman pull and this is the image I can pull to push the image you can use the lab assignment which I will talk about so once you have the account you are good to go with the next lab sequence so let's start the lecture because I want to first explain the concept of images how to build images and then probably it will be easier for you session 3 images and containers agenda of the session is Red Hat Quay.io what is that I just showed a glimpse of it creating and modifying images and the most important aspect is how do we create images where the instructions are created or where the instructions are written the instructions to build the image file system uploading images in the registry multi-stage build design and code a docker file to build custom container image a running container from custom image Red Hat Quay.io Red Hat Quay.io is a service provided by Red Hat for finding and sharing container images Oracle also have its own registry but that is a private registry and this is public it gives you public and private both options so it has the features of repositories where you can push and pull images you can create your own images push there teams and organizations to manage access to private repositories of container images builds automatically build container images from github or bitbucket and push them to registry all these features are there there are many features so I refer to the documentation for the features of this registry for keeping your images let's understand the concept of image and the container how they are related from the working perspective that how do we start what do we do first wherever your repository is the source code I'm talking about source code which will where you have your application you create a docker file docker file is a kind of batch file is a kind of uh, script where you write the instructions to execute the commands in the container file system or the image file system or run commands expose the ports create metadata environment variables copy content everything you want to execute within the image file system you specify those instructions in the docker file when you have docker file ready you execute podman build command the podman build command will create the image you push the image to the container registry as an example quay.io or oracle registry or docker hub once the image is pushed to the registry you can search you can pull you can run all these command podman search podman pull podman run these are the commands search for searching which you have executed in lab 2 pull to pull the image run to run the container based on the image on your Linux host so you have podman using podman you can run multiple containers based on the image which you have pushed to the registry this is the flow this is how it works the docker file is the important document here 
it is the text document that contains all the commands a user could call on the command line to assemble an image like how to run commands add files or directories create environment variables what process to uh, processes to run when launching a container all these things you will find in the docker file the results from building a docker file is the image so the important parameter important concept uh, in creating and building images is that instructions in the docker file the from instruction this is the first instruction you keep in the docker file this instruction specify that you are building your image on the top of which existing image like from ubuntu 18.04 this is official image ubuntu image if you have your own personal account you can specify that the personal account followed by the image name followed by the tag name like in this case sangwan is my account this is my image and this is my tag name if you don't want to start your image from any existing base image you can start from scratch also you can simply write from scratch that simply indicate that your image should not have any parent image what are the use cases for such example uh, probably simple binary if you have a binary which you want to create and you want to pass some parameters to that binary executable and you want to run inside a container with its own data and parameters and everything you can create a probably an image out of it using from scratch the scratch image is a pseudo image that indicate that you want to start without a parent image label is to specify the data inside the image file system metadata in fact so label equal to where key equal to value this format or key equal to value space key 2 equal to value 2 space key 3 equal to value 3 and so and so forth the use case is nothing think of them as comments so when you want to comment you want to put data inside the image file system just to specify that what image it is who built it for example your own information your own contact details you can specify this label now here onward this is very going, going to be very crucial think of uh, your current file system local file system and your image file system definitely you want your application and configuration and libraries and everything in the build instruction to happen here inside the image file system and for that you probably have to copy your source from your local file system to this or probably from a remote location to this location and then you want to execute uh, for example installation of software installing uh, building the binaries from the source code and uh, testing it you probably want to execute certain commands in the image file system that is what you do with add command or add instruction add is a way to copy file from the local file system or a remote URL or a local compressed archive file to a location within the image file system local file system to image file system so add source this is local file system destination this is image file system the source here can be a local file or directory within the build context and a remote URL copy is also same the purpose is same the syntax is same so copy syntax mirror that of add command copy source destination then what is the difference difference is that it can take from argument which you will learn in the session later from this image you want to include so that instruction can be used with copy command also uh, there is a problem here copy cannot be used for automatic archive extraction extraction or it cannot use for remote files so it instruction look incredibly similar to add instruction at first glance and it overlap its purpose the difference is that copy only take local files no remote files 
and no automatic archive extension which is given in add command so with this difference is three differences one advantage that it can take from instruction and uh, two disadvantage that it cannot take a uh, file from remote location and uh, no automatic extraction with these three differences the uh, copy command can be used environment and expose instruction env setting the environment variables which can be passed at run time when you run podman run command you want to pass on some environment variable think of mysql you want to pass the user id and password at run time uh, when you run the container you want to set the environment variable or the username and password at that time itself that can be done using environment variable in the docker file expose if your container is running as a server and you want to expose some ports to connect from the outside world you use expose instruction in the docker file expose port or port slash tcp or port slash udp depending on what format you are using the run instruction will execute statements given to it within the image file system environment during the build process this is the primary mechanism for making changes to a to build your image it can run any command available within the image file system like run command or run executable and arguments so within the executable within the image file system when you want to execute a command to compile or to build or to do something within the image file system you execute these instructions you specify these instructions in the docker file sometime you want to execute the commands as a, as something else as somebody else as a different user even that is possible that can be done using user instruction user controls as what user and group the commands will be executed in the image environment this can affect both the build and runtime process as every subsequent command inside the image file system will be executed as this user what you specified so you can specify like user followed by user id colon group id or group name the volume instruction is making mount points available that is the directories where external storage will be mapped to or will be available inside the image file system means if you want a storage directory inside the image file system to store the data generated by the container probably you have to add external storage so where that will be available inside the image file system so you are creating the mount points within the image file system using volume instruction so this instruction is responsible for creating mount points within the container file system for mounting external volumes from the host or other locations the syntax of volume instruction can take a series of strings separated by spaces or json array for instance these two will produce the same result volume data slash volume 1 and data volume 2 so these are the two volume mount points you are creating or this one separated by space interestingly whatever commands i explained so far you will see two implementation of the same command one is the data type is json where you specify the list or dictionary kind of data and second is uh, without json plain text format both are acceptable formats work directory many times when you are executing commands you have to be in a specific directory in the image file system whether the directory exists or not whether the path exists or not but you know that i want to create this directory path and i want to be inside this directory when i want to execute these command like you want to execute certain command command one command two so you want to execute these command inside this path this is root file system so inside root you have path available inside the path you have a directory and inside this directory you want to create a subdirectory or execute the commands so to create this path and the directories you can use work directory instruction 
it declares the directory context for instruction like run cmd entry point copy and add it specifies the location on the file system where these commands should be executed the work directory instruction will automatically create the directory and any parent directory necessary so work directory followed by the path cmd and entry point instructions cmd provide the default execution instruction for when a container is run from the image and this is the primary way to specify what should happen when a user execute podman run on your image like do this or do this or entry point this is the executable path or this is the command entry point allows you to configure a container that can be run as an executable by default entry point ls hyphen l which means when you will run the container based on this image it will display the list of files build and push an image to query.io this is what you are doing in sequence 2 probably we are going to run a busybox container on our system and get a taste of podman run command what is busybox it is a software suite that provides several unix utilities in a single executable file so you pull the image you don't need anything podman pull busybox and it will use the alias specified in this file to pull it from docker.io library busybox once the image is pulled you will be able to work with it but then we are going to use this image and we are going to create the docker file so vi docker file and this is a simple line from instruction we are doing from busybox the first instruction we discussed in the docker file instructions and then there was another instruction we studied that was cmd to execute a command inside the container and this will execute this command echo hello world this is my first docker image and that text so this is the these are the two lines which you are putting inside your docker file the minimum size file now build the image using this uh, docker file podman build hyphen t so give your account name query.io your username and your repository name version and most important is uh, this dot this dot represent the current directory so podman build hyphen t query.io username repository name i mean the image name and the version name and the dot important point after space there is a space before dot remember so it will pull the image it will execute this and it will build the image what is busybox this is answered here busybox is a very simple executable one executable that offer many unix utilities in a single executable file for example you want to install something you want to execute something echo command list command uh, yum command it offers many command which means uh, starting from this single utility you can install all the packages uh, and create that uh, dream image of yours so now test your image locally podman run and the complete path where this is the tag which you specified so you are giving the complete uh, image name query.io your username oci v1 remember that your image is still on your account in your system it is not on the query.io right now it is just tagged with that then tag and push your image podman login now you are logging in hyphen u your username query.io then run the command podman push query.io user username image name and tag name and this is the output you can expect the image will be pushed and you can verify that image this is precisely what i showed in the beginning of this uh, session that uh, these are the images available on my query.io account which i pushed from my local system container from multiple images that is fantastic feature why there are two main reasons that uh, why we use multi stage builds one is the size and second is the security the attack vector these are the two main concern regions which will be addressed by the multi stage builder how 
imagine you have uh, let me talk about it with example uh, first uh, let me explain and then you will get a taste of it what is it multi-stage builds are methods of organizing a docker file to include multiple images how by creating different sections of a docker file each referring a different base image this allows a multi-stage build to fulfill a function previously filled by using multiple docker files copying files between containers or running different pipelines the key benefits a size of the final container is reduced it improves the performance and it allows for better organization of podman commands and files and provide a standardized method of running build actions you will see all these features with the help of an example this is our example project a simple project to test these things it is a simple web application with angular and node app server the node app server is our server and angular is the front end angular ui is the front end so we have a ui built with angular and running on the node.js server so therefore we are going to create uh, two different containers also we are going to test it uh, uh, using a single container let's see this is a ready project I have created on my GitHub and you can use this, pull that uh, using git, git clone repository, go to the directory and uh, you see the file. This will explain everything. Let me explain here. This is the docker file. I have in fact you will see two docker file, docker file, docker file dev. This file is multi-stage build file. You don't use this file, we are going to replace it or we are going to rename it temporarily and we will create a new docker file here. So git clone docker multi-stage example, go to this directory, multi-stage example. Now you see that you can use tree command here, the same tree you could see that on the slide also. I'm going to move this docker file to some other file, mv docker file to let's say docker file dot multi because this is for multiple multi-stage build why because i want to try with a single stage build i want to show you the size and why the size is and then how it will reduce the size if we convert it into a single a multi stage build image Let, and with explanation with example so vi docker file i'm just creating the docker file first now what am i doing is you look at carefully here i'm using node base image version 10 line number one is the from instruction so use the no base image node version 10 create this directory and go to the directory user source app in my image file system copy package.json file from my current file system local file system to this user source app in the image file system copy web app package.json file into web app package.json file package or uh, this web app directory inside the image file system create this directory if the directory does not exist then inside this directory we are working you are still working inside the app directory inside this directory you already copied the uh, package.json file which means when you run a npm install and then go to the cd and then run npm install means you are performing the installation of the packages listed inside this file once inside this directory and then again inside this directory you are doing it twice npm install here and then you are going to web apps and then running install there and you are also installing angular cli and then again you are running the npm install command there then copy all the files from my current directory in my local file system to the current directory in my image file system then go to the web apps directory and then run npm build command and then expose port number 3070 and then uh, go to the node start the node server and run index.js we are not going to build any functionality in the app just to keep it simple we have a simple index.js file and for node server and uh, and that serve the angular app on port number 3070 so so one first copy command if you remember was this file package.json file these two file actually and second was under web app folder under web app angular.json file 
sorry package this one these two files so first these two files were copied from the root folder and web app folder and then based on this we used uh, npm install command to install all the packages listed inside these and then we copied all the files and we run the build command so this is what i explained uh, from the file also start from base image node two packages dot json file one in the node.js server and another is for angular ui we need to copy these into the image file system which we did and install all the dependencies which we did we need this step first to build the images faster in case there is a change in the source later on we don't want to repeat installing dependencies every time we change any source file angular uses angular cli to build the app so we install cli also and install all the dependencies then we run npm run build command to build the angular app and all the assets will be created under dist folder within the web app folder so uh, we took the backup of docker file and we created the docker file with this example with this content i already explained this file so this is going to build that image so this will uh, download and it will perform all the steps let's run this image as a container and see the results in the web page when we are running the container with interactive and detached mode that is it i for interactive t for terminal d for detached mode port mapping this is the important point any request coming on port number 3070 on my host machine will be forwarded to port number 3070 inside my container and this is the port which was exposed so i expose this using expose instruction in my docker file and this is a, a port on my local machine so any request on my local machine i could have specified any port here coming on this port will be forwarded to this port inside my container that's what uh, called port forwarding node web app yet not completed the networking parts so will request you to wait for the networking topic important topic all right there are options you can specify uppercase p also that would have provided any random port then you have to fetch that you have to check that port yourself or you can give any port here uh, non privileged port which is greater than 3000 or greater than 30000 that could have been specified here once you run the command we can see the result in the browser ip address followed by the port number and we show you this kind of message means the application running there are two main problem with this build one is the size second is the larger surface area let's see the image and see the size when you use podman images you will see the size of this which is around 1.28 gb which are huge size because of uh, the copying the dependencies twice which are not required in the final image unnecessary increasing the size of the image to more than 300 mb and you will see that another problem is the surface area which is prone to attacks we included npm dependencies and the entire angular cli in the image which are unnecessary in the final image for the images to be efficient they have to be uh, small in size and the surface area and this is where the multi stage build will come into play with multi stage builds we can use multiple from statements to build each phase every from statement start with a new base and leave behind everything which you don't need from the previous from statement so first clean up and do the all all process again but with this new docker file which include many instructions what we discussed in the session and this explain a lot of things from node 10 as ui build so i am giving a name to this image so whatever we will be build from this the name of this will be ui build work directory copy go to the directory do the installation and as i said it will create a dist folder inside web apps after the build is successfully done therefore what i need is ultimately only dist i don't need the source code i don't need the dependencies and hence 
using this UI build here, I am copying the files. So I am using another from instruction, another node image as server, work directory root, and then copying from UI build and the file which I was referring, dist folder, user source app web app dist inside the current directory of my root directory because I am working in root. So it will create a web app directory dist and it will copy everything inside root. So therefore leaving everything behind, copying only what is needed. Copy packet and then run npm install, copy index, expose port number 3070 and entry point and CMD. The rest of the instructions are same. Now you build the image version 2 and see the size yourself. So run the container with a different port with uh, this command. Uh, like uh, you have to change, uh, here it is using the same port, you have to use the different port. So make it 77 or something like that. And then uh, internal port will be 3070, but external mapping has to be different. And then version 2, then you see the difference yourself. Why we use multi-stage build is the summary now. It allows you to separate build, test and runtime environment needing separate Docker files. Second, it minimizes the actual size of the final container because the various layers are no longer stored in the final container image. It allows you to ensure that uh, there are not extra binaries in your deployed container decreasing your attack vector. It also gives you ability to run steps or stages in parallel. In CI CD we use this heavily. That's why we see that it simplifies CI CD pipeline and provide an easy way for developers to interact with various expected gates on the way to the production deployment. Therefore, in your production, you will not be able to survive without this multi-stage build. That's all for this session. Or oh, just now finish, nick of the time. Wow, cool. So see that uh, Docker, oh, sorry, Podman, images, 1.28 GB. This is what precisely I told you. It will have 1.2 GB size. Now I can run this also. Let me pull the instruction. So podman run hyphen it hyphen d hyphen p three zero double seven whatever port I want to use I can use port number three zero double seven colon three zero seven zero. This is my inside my container and using this image colon v one. So this will run the container. Now I can uh, use this 3077 inside my machine and check this. 3077. I was able to see that and this is the same page I was referring to. So this is what the multi-stage build is team.